Well, good morning from Israel. I'm in Ashdod. Ashdod is one of the th cities of the Philistines and getting ready to go back home to the United States later today. But I've got a moment. I wanted to go ahead and record this second message from 2 Peter. In the I Faith series, uh, we've had two sermons on Mark, two on James, two on 1 Peter. This is our second on 2 Peter. It's called simply backward or forward. Simple thought, but then all these messages are simple because we're aiming to uncover the major themes, the major uh, spiritual points that the Lord wants us to take away. Uh, let's begin with just a little bit of review. Now, in Peter's second letter, which is written shortly before his death uh, by crucifixion, upside down, according to an early tradition, uh, Peter warns the church against the legion of false teachers who are already beginning to cause trouble everywhere. And he urges us to grow in knowledge. That was last week's, uh, that was the talk I did, growing in knowledge. Now, of course, Peter is not simply referring to intellectual growth. He's not saying, you know, just become better at mathematics or just learn facts. Although it can be of value to learn facts, but it's knowledge of God that is the goal. Knowledge of God is paramount. And in spiritual growth, we go forward or backward. I, I know we might think that sometimes we just, we're at a plateau, we're stable. But stable can be stagnant. So easy to slip backwards when we're not going forward and we don't even know it. Peter himself continued to grow well past the time that he was one of the 12 disciples in Jesus's earthly ministry. He grows in confidence. We see this not just at Pentecost and in Acts 4.12, but his confidence and his responsibility level continued to grow throughout his life. And I think that makes Peter a great model for us today. And we can kind of trace the, the arc of his life. He's a follower of Jesus, Mark 1. He's an apostle, Mark 3. Chief apostle, I think it's fair to say, the prince of the apostles, Matthew 16. He's a leader in the early church, Acts 2. Traveling missions evangelist, Acts 8, Acts 9. He's a martyr, John 21. Peter was committed unto death, and we know what happened to him. Uh, at the end of the first century, maybe a year after Revelation was written, there's a document called First Clement. Clement was a leader in Rome, and Clement refers to the deaths of uh, Peter and Paul. Peter left us with two documents, two letters, two epistles, but really three if you count Mark, since Mark is, as I've mentioned, uh, kind of the gospel as Peter would record it. Mark was written through Peter's influence according to the second century because uh, Mark was Peter's interpreter. So he thought a lot about what he learned from this man, this eyewitness. So our, our lesson today is mainly going to be in 2 Peter chapter 1. And, but I'd like to start with where we ended last time, uh, and that's at the end of chapter 3, okay? You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away from the error of lawless people and lose your own stability, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. So Peter had urged us to continue to grow uh, in knowledge, but also in grace, because ignorance is dangerous. And spiritual stability depends on continued growth, not just becoming old, becoming an old person, but actually knowing more, uh, being wiser. All right? Knowledge and wisdom are different. Wisdom, you could say, is knowledge used uh, in a spiritual way. But knowledge, everyone has knowledge. But not everyone has wisdom. So let's uh, jump back to the beginning of the letter where Peter says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and goodness, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you be become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire, 2 Peter 1, verses 3 and 4. Knowledge is not just Bible, it's relational, it's knowledge of God. Peter says that we, we grow when we share in his nature. 
the idea of us sharing in the divine nature, it, it may sound a bit spooky or may seem like new age. Well, and that stuff is weird, but there is a biblical sharing in his nature, becoming more and more godly as a result. Uh, the Orthodox churches emphasize this probably a lot more than the Catholic churches. Although in the Orthodox, I think it's more the priests and the monks who, who talk about you know, becoming uh, God, becoming, uh, not God, uh, becoming go godly, becoming like God. Uh, the Protestant, well, there are a lot of Protestants and independents who will emphasize spiritual growth, but they don't do it very consistently because of the, their, their opinion that uh, really you're just saved by grace alone, faith alone, and the way most people hear that is, what else do we need to do? So spiritual growth seems to be optional in most Protestant churches. It's very sad. But growth is essential. You know, there are lots of animals that keep growing. I mean, sometimes you can, you look at an animal and you, you know how old it is from how big it is. I mean, there are creatures in the sea that are like that. There are creatures on the land. Humans, no. <laughs> you, know, you don't look at a guy who's uh, on the short side and say, oh, he must just be 15 years old. Or and then a tall guy, oh, he must be 50. It doesn't work that way. Uh, parts of us continue to grow, right? My ears continue to grow. I'm actually happy about that. You know, they say, yeah, your ears, nose keep growing as long as you're alive. And your feet. But maybe that's more gravity. Your foot, your shoe size gets bigger. Because uh, when I was younger, I had little ears. Now they're just about becoming normal. <laughs> but it would be very bad if, if everything else kept growing. And people who have uncontrolled growth, giantism, uh, where their, their glands aren't working right, um, they die very young. So not physical growth, but spiritual growth is what the Lord wants us to do. And this is what Peter reminds us of. Uh, continuing in verse 5, For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness fastness with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, and that's a key phrase, and they're increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. We don't want to be nearsighted. If I take my glasses off, then legally I'm not supposed to drive. I mean, I could do it, but it wouldn't be safe for everyone else. <laughs> Probably not safe for me. We don't want to be blind, but we are blind, and we're short-sighted when we forget that we've been cleansed when we stop growing. And so remembering our conversion helps us. By the way, the more we tell our story, people we're reaching out to, uh, even to fellow Christians, even we, as we kind of tell the story, when we're praying, we're thanking God for how he's worked in our lives. When we review that story, that's good for us. It helps us to keep growing. And basically, we go either forward or backward. Um, I don't know if you have a driver's license. If you drive, an automatic is very easy, but a normal manual, uh, what we call standard, it's a bit different. If you're going slowly up a hill and you stop, um, it can be a little tricky. Uh, it, you can be in gear, maybe you put it in neutral. You can easily start rolling backwards, and that's not good. We need to keep moving. Uh, think of language study. Many of you, many of you watching this video speak two or three languages. But if it's a language you learned in long ago, maybe in school, if you don't use it, you lose it. So we have to keep pushing ourselves if we're not going to lose the, the knowledge that we had before. Because we do forget. I mean, I, I hate to admit it. I mean, I was, I was good at mathematics in, in university but I've not needed that level of mathematics in a long time. So a lot of it, I mean, the symbols look familiar, but you know, I mean, I don't need calculus when I'm figuring out how to get across town. You know, I have a GPS. I don't need, I don't need to use trigonometry to figure out the time looking at the sun. You know, I use my iPhone, the one I'm speaking into right now. So keep pushing forward, health and fitness, the same. I mean, if we don't make, take some measures to watch ourselves, to, 
to push on physically, mentally, to be stimulated, then we're in danger. I mean, we're fighting a losing battle anyway, right, in, in a way. But it's going to happen a lot faster. There's an article yesterday my brother sent to me about the uh, correlation between physical exercise and Alzheimer's disease, dementia. The suggestion is, was pretty clear. If you don't get some good exercise, um, bad things happen in the brain. And I'm sure that's right. Let me just uh, finish the end of our passage and I'll give some application points. Peter says, Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this way, there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's our passage from 2 Peter 1. Effort, diligence. Uh, this is what Peter's talking about here. And if we don't do that, we roll backwards. We don't go forward, we go backward. This isn't just a suggestion. Peter speaks as though it's a salvation matter, which I think it is. And don't misunderstand. I'm not saying if you don't have a good day spiritually, then you're in trouble with God, or if you don't go forward every day, then terrible things will happen. We all have ups and downs, right? We're not all as consistent as we'd like to be. But in general, those who don't keep growing, um, their hearts shrink, they become hard, their faith is challenged, and they're much more likely to walk away from God. So it's a dangerous thing to do. And the diligence of daily thinking about the Lord is worth the effort. So I've got to ask you, as I ask myself, are you growing like that, taking it higher in your walk with God? Am I growing like that? Like Peter, do I continue to add to my faith goodness, to my goodness knowledge, and all the way up, or have I forgotten? Uh, second, do I think about these things every day? Do I think about them every day? This should be on our heart. We shouldn't be, should, we shouldn't be that we're several hours into the day and we go, oh, I forgot. God's word. Uh, uh, God, thank you for being with me. Uh, uh, that's not good. We need to be aware. And one way of, of this may help. Ask, how am I different this year than I was last year? What's different? And I don't mean, um, you know, you live in a different city or you have more gray hair. I mean, is there a positive difference? Have we gone forward? And in connection with that, do I have a strategy? Do I have a strategy for growth? Right? Do I take advantage of the opportunities God gives me? We talked about that last time. But these are some important questions for all of us. We go forward or we go backward. So are you going forwards? If not, are you sure you're not going backwards? It's hard to be in the middle. It's hard to be stable, stagnant in the middle. No, we, we tend to roll back. Now, next time, we're going to be looking at the little letter of Jude. Jude, one of Jesus's lesser known brothers. We already looked at James, um, his second, the second brother in the family. We'll be looking at Jude, very interesting, very colorful letter. But in the meantime, let's keep growing because it is really true. We go forward or we go backward. And Second Peter reminds us of this vital truth. Thanks for listening. Until next time.